hello and welcome to Confessions of a Refashionista. I'm Refashionista Sherry and I am here to show you how to live affordably, sustainably, because why? Being eco-friendly shouldn't cost the earth. Um, okay, um, this, <laughs> I just blew a button here on this blouse. Okay, I'm gonna go check. You can see here. Ah, this um, this blow. You can. It's very tight. I've had this since 2016, and I love it. And I don't know if anyone else is experiencing this, but as I'm getting older, my chest is just getting bigger, and it's really, really annoying me. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go change quickly, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, you are not gonna believe this. Um, went up, put on another blouse, and uh, yeah, this one as well, you can see here, is pulling. It's pulling open here. So I guess we have our uh, tutorials for today. Two ways to upsize shirts. Let's get to it. This is Confessions of a Refashionista. So I was just walking through my kitchen to go to my little studio downstairs. And first of all, I mean, come on, how gorgeous is my countertop cover up thingy there? I will link the tutorial for that down below. But more importantly, um, yeah, I think those two fabrics will look fantastic together. A little bit of pattern mixing. So I'm just going to steal this tea towel and use it to upsize this blouse. <laughs> For these two awesome ways to upsize your shirts, all you need are your two small shirts. And like, I just adore this one so much. So I'm so glad I know how to upsize it. This ruffle is fantastic. And this one here is a vintage shirt that I got when I was still living in Berlin. And I mean, they're both from Berlin, but how gorgeous is this embroidery? It is just so subtle. So I definitely want to be able to wear both of these again. So then next you need your insert fabric because that's how we're making them bigger. You gotta add fabric, right? So clearly for the striped black and white one, I'm using my polka dotted tea towel. And for the black embroidered one, I thought I would add some cool vintage lace. So uh, yeah, which one should we do first? Which one should we do first? Um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So I'm going to start with the black one because it doesn't really need as much upsizing as the other one. So I'm going to add a cute little back insert with my lace. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've grabbed here just like a storage box lid and it is about the same kind of width as the shoulders of this blouse. The blouse has also been turned inside out. So I'm just going to kind of <laughs> make this storage box lid here wear <laughs> the blouse so I can have a nice flat surface here to work on. I mean, you can use anything, a piece of cardboard, a cutting board. I mean, whatever you have on hand that is about the same kind of shoulder width or length here as, uh, as your blouse. So next... I am grabbing my piece of lace, and like I said, I only need maybe a centimeter or two to kind of give me enough space to close the buttons in the front nicely, because it's really only one button that is the issue here. And I've placed my lace on the back of the blouse now, and I'm kind of, I think it's like around this area, or maybe it's actually under the, under the underarm seams where it's most needed. So that's perfect how I've positioned that. So now I'm going to pin it in place with the right side of the lace facing the wrong side of the shirt. So now I have my lace pinned in place. I'm going to grab a little piece of chalk and uh, kind of sketch out to the best of my non-artist ability uh, the shape that I want my insert to have. And I think for me, I mean, the easiest is always a heart. So that's kind of what I'm going to go for here. Oh, by the way, 
If you want to have even more awesome refashionista tutorials, upsizes, you know, sustainable lifestyle, everything, then, um, see here, is it here? Somewhere here? There should be a little mini cartoon me, and, uh, yeah, click there. Okay, your shape, absolutely, I mean, and very clearly from my shape, <laughs> does not have to be perfect whatsoever. It is just simply your guideline for when you are stitching. You can make it big or smaller as you're stitching. You'll you'll figure it out as you're going along. That's pretty much, you know, my my mantra when I'm refashioning. I'll figure it out as I go along. <laughs> So now I'm just going to stitch my lace to my shirt following my kind of guideline here as best I can. And um, yeah, then we'll move on to the next step. <laughs> So now that my lace is all stitched on, I'm going to really, really carefully go and trim off all of the excess lace. I'm cutting as close to the seam as I can. And don't worry, we are going to make this super sturdy in just a couple more steps. So now I have all of the excess lace chopped off. And of course, I shall be adding this to my scrappy stash. Now we're going to flip it around and you can absolutely see where you're going to be following the exterior seam and chopping out this uh, panel of fabric from the original blouse. And I mean, it's very easy to do that. You're just going to kind of cut through, <laughs> making sure, of course, that your lace piece is very far away from where you are cutting because you don't want to cut through, you know, anything you don't want to cut through. And again, with this kind of stuff, just go slow, you know, take your time, put on a, put on a series in the background, <laughs> binge something while you're, while you're trimming fabric. This looks pretty darn fantastic just as it is and is absolutely going to give me that centimeter or two of extra stretch on the back that is needed to kind of pull around to the front so those buttons don't, you know, don't pull pull apart anymore in the front. Now, you can totally be done right now, but I like to go around and just do a top stitch all around this kind of trimmed up area, just kind of trapping it with a really tight, wide zigzag or satin stitch. So I'm going to go do that. This came out so well. I mean, again, better than I had expected. You can see here, look, absolutely even if i put my arms way way back there is no pulling of the button here that i mean problem totally solved so would you like to see let's take a look here at the back i put on a pink tank top so you can see it better <laughs> but it is i mean it's comfortable it looks great and like i said this is like seriously even really far. I have to go really far back with my shoulders for it to start even pulling the tiniest bit. So success. This absolutely worked. Now I have another question. I'm not sure if I want to keep the length as it is or, you know, shorten it so it's just, you know, hitting um, kind of at where my, where my trousers, the waistband of my trousers hit. Uh, what do you think? Let me know down below if you think it should be I should keep it longer or, you know, so I can tuck it in or just have it, have it right where my trousers hit. I'm not really sure. What do you think? Let me know. Now next, let's add some side panels to this lovely, roughly striped blouse. So yeah, so I can actually comfortably wear it. <laughs> so I think if I have my tea towel folded in half like so, and then in half again, that should be about the perfect size for each of my side panels. So yeah, I'm just going to cut my tea towel in half as evenly as possible. And I think because, I mean, you can see it's already starting to fray here because this is like cotton linen. I am going to yeah use this whole thing 
for each side and I'm gonna make it into a nice tube and then flip it right side out so I can then avoid any frayed edges here. So you can see before I stitched the raw edge together here, I did go ahead and I chopped off those big bulky seams, but I did leave the one on the bottom because this can be the finished edge of my uh, side of the blouse. And yeah, then I don't have to faff around finishing off the seam there because it's already done. <laughs> Anywho, so this one I have flipped right side out to show you guys how it should look and you want your seam to be going along the back side. This is a side that will be facing towards your body. Now next comes the step that I hate this. This is like torture for me. Um, does anybody else absolutely despise ironing? I don't know why I hate this so much. Maybe it's something from chores from my childhood. <laughs> I am not sure, but I really, really cannot stand ironing. But sometimes, you know, when you want a project to come out really nice, it does help to have those crisp, clean edges to stitch along. So that's why, you know, I'm biting the bullet and I'm ironing. Um, let me know down below if you if you are a fan of ironing or um, if you kind of feel the same way as I do about, you know, this this hot little little torture device here. So now it is finally time to grab our blouse and you want it to be inside out and you are literally just going to chop up both sides from the bottom hem straight up through the sleeve hem. And that should seriously, it's just one straight chop. So I just noticed that my seams here are going to chop out a lot nicer and cleaner if it's uh, folded in half. So that's what I'm going to do. So now we have a blouse with the sides totally chopped out. So now we're going to grab our fabric inserts and pin them in place. So now because I'm using this finished bottom for my bottom hem, that's how I'm going to arrange it. I'm going to start with the bottom hem to bottom hem and the right sides facing and pin in place. Making sure that my edges are as evenly lined up as possible. This blouse is a little bit of a tailored fit, so I kind of am going to have to go on a bit of a curve here. And I'm just going to keep pinning all the way up until I reach the sleeve hem. Now, before I trim off the excess and hem it up here, I'm going to stitch it on just to be absolutely sure that I'm not going to end up chopping off too much. So as you can see, it is absolutely perfectly stitched on. And I mean, this pattern makes this is going to look fantastic when it's finished. I'm so pleased. So now I just got to repeat the whole process here on um, this this other this other chopped edge. And here's where you really, really have to make sure that you are stitching the correct sides together because I have done this before actually in my upsizing trousers tutorial. I'll link it down below and you can see it for yourself where I ended up stitching the wrong sides together and had to unpick and start all over. So um, yeah, does that ever happen to you? <laughs> do you ever do you ever make ridiculous sewing mistakes that then take, you know, forever to fix them? Um, anyway, yeah, so I'm going to go stitch this together and uh, we'll be back. And both sides of my panel are now stitched on this. Actually, I mean, look at that. That looks so cool. I'm so pleased with this. Now it's time to sort out here the uh, sleeve underarm. And you can see I just kind of stopped stitching just about a centimeter away. And that is so I can trim off this excess and then fold it under and stitch everything together. So it kind of has a really similar line here at the sleeve cuff. 
So I'm just going to chop straight across here and I'm going to give myself about two centimeters for seam allowance and folding under. Okay, and this is actually already a nice little tube. <laughs> so that can go in my stash and be, you know, used for something that I need a fabric tube for. <laughs> So now I did bust out my iron again and folded this under so the fray is not going to happen. And uh, yeah, now I'm just going to go stitch straight across and probably all the way around the sleeve just to make sure everything is going to stay in place. And la la, it is stitched together all the way down. Now I got to go repeat the whole process on the other chopped side. How fantastic did this come out? Look at those gorgeous side panels. It really, oh, the string garden. <laughs> it really came out so much better than I thought it was going to. It's comfortable. I mean, the original fabric is a bit stretchy, so it is still still quite form fitting, but it definitely, I'm not gonna pop a button anymore. <laughs> And that's the important thing. Plus, this pattern mix looks so, so cool together. I am, I'm thrilled. Uh, do you guys actually upsize your wardrobe? I mean, is this something that other people do? Because I don't really see a lot of other kind of refashionistas or tutorials online for upsizing. So do you actually do this yourself? Are these kind of tutorials useful for you? please, please let me know so I can absolutely do more. Plus, if there's any kind of upsizing tutorials you specifically want, like do you have something in your wardrobe that you really want to know, hey, how can I upsize this? Because I, I got a lot of ideas and I'm always <laughs> having to upsize my own wardrobe. So if I can help you out, I really would love to do that because I sincerely appreciate you guys. You know, if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, Thank you so much. And as always, head on over to uh, refashionistasherry.com. As you know, everything is over there. And uh, yeah, until next time, <laughs> enjoy your upsizing <laughs> and stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch ya on the zigzag. <laughs>